and welcome once again to Chair Interval Training, brought to you right there safely in your own home by Community Access Yellow Springs, Cable TV Channel 5 on Spectrum Cable if you have cable. But if you don't, you can also watch it on YouTube, on the internet, whenever you want to. So a couple options there. This class is also sponsored by the Yellow Springs Senior Center. And I'm simply your instructor, Lynn Hardman, and I wanted to share some more beautiful dahlias from my garden in a vase made by a local ceramic artist who's since flown, um, and uh, her name is Sophie Davidson. She was gonna throw this one away because she didn't like the glaze, but I think it's unique and more beautiful. <laughs> All right, so let's get started with our exercise program. Before we do, always, always before beginning any new exercise program, consult your physician. Make sure you talk about if it's safe for you and the benefits outweigh the risks. Mm -hmm. And if you feel unbalanced or dizzy at any time, it's recommended you stay or return to your sturdy chair. And that is what we're going to use today. A sturdy chair, a clean, clear area, a rubber ball, and a jug. Make sure the lid's on secure. You can stow these things. Well, if you don't have a jug, hand weights will do, or even cans. And you can do this exercise program with just your body if you don't have these other items. I'm going to put on some music, and we're going to move. <laughs> so. How are you doing today? I'm feeling mm, okay, but if you had to rate your mood right now on a scale from, let's say, one being really crummy mood and 10 being, I feel I'm on cloud nine. No, 10, how would you rate your mood? And I'm gonna tell you right now, Exercise is very good for your emotional, mental well-being. Sometimes we don't feel like exercising, but if you remind yourself you'll feel better afterward, you'll probably be more apt to do it. So let's do it. I've got a new little bit of music. I've said this before, but if you're curious, and I hope you're curious, the music we use for Silver Sneakers classes, this is a Silver Sneakers certified class, is always between 124 beats per minute and about 128 beats per minute. Except for the cool down when we always slow down on purpose gradually. Before we slow down on purpose, let's warm up gradually on purpose. And that's very important for the safety and comfort of your workout. All right, so just march it out and double check your area. Make sure nothing's underfoot where you might slip, trip, or fall. Best posture. Ears over shoulders, over hips, whether you're seated and marching or standing and marching. This makes our moving easier. Breathing, very important. If you can, breathe in through your nose and then out through your mouth or your nose and see how it feels to lift your arms at your sides. If there's any range of motion, whether it's your shoulders or your hips or your spine or your knees, if there's any range of motion that hurts, just reduce it, make it smaller. Do your best to keep moving. And when you need to take a break, rest. All right, let's take our feet out wider. And you can use your chair. If you're behind your chair or at the side of it at all times during your workout, you should be able to use it. Let's rock back and forth to check your balance, right? So your, ba your balance check is your chair. And your perceived exertion, because if you feel wobbly, you're right. There's a 
lot of reasons for that. But let's warm up those shoulders, picking them up towards our ears and rolling them back. Ah. At least I hope it feels good. Let's see how it feels to open and close our shoulders. Start a little and then gradually increase your range of motion. Pay attention to your body. Ah, that feels good. Let's see how it feels to gently reach and rotate. A little at first, and if it feels bigger, it feels okay, you can make it bigger. <laughs> we always work on the A, B, C's. A is for agility, B is for balance, and C is for coordination. And sometimes I have trouble coordinating my mouth and my tongue with my body. <laughs> Does that ever happen to you? Let's march it out. Let's come on over here to the left side of our chair. Make sure your weights or anything is tucked under. I want to preview a new pattern. It's sort of new. We're going to do it a little different than we've done in the past. We're going to do a pattern that sounds like this. March two, three, lift. March two, three, lift. March two, three, front. Back, march, two, three, knee lift, hamstring or hip curl. Just lift your heel behind you, but pull that navel in and use the chair. I'm gonna show it to you from the side. But you stay facing forward, use that chair. One, two, three, lift, one, two, three, lift. Now, especially when you draw your leg behind you, pull your navel in and try not to arch your back. You can keep the leg straightish, or you can bend it. Whatever works best for you. I'm coming back to my chair. Later on, we'll get rid of the march and we'll do what I call a rocking horse, where it's just a knee lift, knee lift. And then for agility, we might do it double time and it'll look like this, knee lift. And it's just a little rocking horse. And this is what it looks like from the side. But we're just warming up. I wanted to show you that pattern. Put a seed in your mind. Another pattern that we'll use, I'll demonstrate to you in the chair. So let's walk our body mindfully, carefully to the front of your chair. Make sure you line your heels up with that chair so you can sit down carefully and not miss. I don't think you can see my feet today. I'll back it up just a little. As you sit down, keep your head and chest lifted. Try not to let your knees knock. And then reach your tailbone back. You can squat a few times or just get settled. And Whenever we're in our chair, it's the best time to get a sip of water. So I'm going to do that. I hope you have some water handy. If not, you know, this is a good time to go and fill up something that won't spill or shatter and break glass. This isn't always the best unless you have a really good um, wrapper around it. I've seen some. But I've also seen a couple of those break in the gym setting. All right. The other pattern I wanted to preview to you that we'll use today is sitting tall and at the edge of our chair. It's our good old fashioned single, single, double pattern. So we got a single, single, double, single, single, double, with knee lifts, or you could stretch out your legs, double, single, single, double. You could swing your arms forward and back, and cross crawl opposition, and that's a good coordination warm up. Single, 
single, single, double. And later on, when we're doing a, a nice long pattern of eight to 10 minutes of good aerobic activity, we'll add some brain games to it and we might even double it up so it'll be double, ooh, double. And then we'll do four, three, two, but let's just stretch out that right leg. Sitting tall, inhale up. As you hinge halfway forward towards your lap, support your back on that left thigh. Think forward with the nose and the fingers and back with the hips and the tailbone. Lift your toes and fingers up. And let's say hello. Just rotating through the shoulders and the wrist, or that one shoulder, and the ankle, a little bit through the hip as well. Good, sit tall. Pull your navel in to support your spine. And if it feels good on your hip, lean back and rotate through that ankle. Big flowy circles one way, and then the other. So when we draw the knee to the chest, we're stretching the back of the hip and the spine. But if that hurts you, you can wiggle your ankle on the ground or substitute another limbering exercise that feels good to you. Sit tall, support your body on that right lap as you inhale, lengthening through the left leg this time. Keeping the spine long. If your shoulder hurts, shorten the lever. Keep the back bones long and strong. Think forward with your stretch, lifting your toes and your fingers up. Let's see if we can wave the toes and fingers in and out. You can do them together or you can do them opposite. Later on, we'll do a little opposite brain game. So I wanted to plant the opposite uh, seed, another seed in your brain. Good, sit tall, pull the navel in. Draw that knee toward the chest. And see how it feels to fully articulate through that ankle. Ankles are so important, and the other way. So important for our balance. Just that little joint there underneath of us, is, it's really very important for balance. You gotta have strong ankles. Gotta have strong heart and lungs too. So let's take a deep breath. And remember, as we exhale and curl our spine, while we do this aerobic pattern, whether you're in your chair or in the air, we're shooting for a target zone of four to seven on a scale of one, wait, one <laughs> to 10. Um, and basically you should be able to talk while exercising. Okay, well, I'm gonna dig my heels in and see how it feels to stand up. You too? Now, if you stand up and you feel a little dizzy or something hurts, by all means, sit right back down. But if you are confident, you are feeling fine standing, we're gonna do that pattern that I showed you in the warm up that sounded like March two, three, lift, march two, three, lift, march two, three, forward, march two, three, back. So, you can lift your knee in front and you can bend your knee in the back. Make sure you're not kicking anything. Occasionally I kick the couch. But pull the navel in, lift, your chest and shoulders, keep the back long and strong. Now, if you don't need your chair for a balance check, you can do both arms, kick back, up, back, up, back, march two, three, lift, front, lift back, march two, three, up. Now, keep working, keep moving, do your best. This is hard in the chair. You kind of have to squiggle over to one side. Squiggle, it's a word. I just made it up. Okay, we're doing this at tempo with that march in between. Let's do two more with the march. 
That was one. One more with the march, and let's get rid of the march. Just knee kick, knee, kick back, knee, kick back. I call this a rocking horse. You got your chair there if you need it. Pull the navel in, stretch the crown of the head up. I'm gonna move to the front, but you stay where you're at so you can see what we're doing. Keeping the neck or the head tall. You can use that rear leg straight and really squeeze your glutes. Or you can bend that rear leg and do a hamstring curl. Your choice. Good, we're doing it at tempo. I'm going to get back to my chair side so that I can use it because I might need it when we go a little faster with our rocking horse. Make it small, two more. Last one, now double time. Knee kick, knee kick. Just a little rocking chair, a rocking horse. So we're just rocking, got your chair there. Good, four more, three, two, one. March it out, how did that feel? You might feel a little tight on one side here, other side there, don't worry. We'll even that out. But how are you doing on our scale of one to 10? Hopefully, you're breathing a little heavier than we were starting, but you're not out of breath. You're out of breath, have a seat. We're gonna do that pattern behind our chair with our hips out to the side. So, nice wide stance. March, two, three, lift. March, two, three, lift. March, two, three, lift. Same side arm, if you wanna add an arm. March, two, three, kind of feels like a penguin. So there was a rocking horse over there, and there's a penguin back here. Pull your navel in, keep your shoulder and the chest up. You can add those arms or not, it's up to you. Dorsal flex your foot and you're feeling it in your hips, maybe. This time not the back, but the sides. Let's do four more, three more, Two more. Now, double time. Make it little. One, two, three, lift. One, two, three, lift. One, two, three, lift. One, two, three, lift. You can feel like a penguin. Pull the navel in and breathe. Four. You can do it in slow impact. Three. Two. One. March it out. Doing all right? Want to continue for about maybe four more minutes? Maybe less. This time we're gonna take our rocking horse over to the left. Use the left, march two and three. Back with the right, up with the left. Back with the right, up with the left. Can you see and touch your chair with your right hand? Now you can use your oppositional arms this time if you like, or any arms you like, just keep moving. And when you have that leg going behind you, make sure you pull those navels in. Well, you only have one each, but <laughs> brace with your abdominals to support your spine. Good, all right. Let's do two more full rocking horses, front and back. That was one. Then we're gonna get rid of the march two, three and just do knee, kick. Got it? Pull the navel in, reach high with the crown of the head. This is tempo. Let's try it four more. Three, two, now double time. You can have those oppositional arms. You can keep both feet on the ground, but rock it like a rocking horse. How many more? Four, three, two, one. March it out. Woo. I'm getting a little warm. How about you? Are you still in the target zone of maybe a four to seven? We're gonna do one more. This one's not a rocking horse or a penguin. 
it's more of a fighter. And I'm gonna come out, I want you to be behind your chair so you can use it for a balance check. But I'm gonna step out in front so you can see what I'm doing. Feet about hip width. Settle down into your mini squat. Breathe, keep your knees and your hips soft, kind of bouncy. And for those of you who don't like dance, this is a punch, two, three, punch, two, three. For right, left, right, left, right, left. Right, left, right. Coordinate your punches. Pull your navel in and breathe. Now, one, two, three, duck. Duck. Squat. One, two, three, good. Left, duck, right. Good, left, right, left. Can you say it with me, right? Left, right. That's our top test. Right, left, right. Left, right, left. Four more. Three more. Two more. Last one. Let's try a little double time. Double time. No ducking. Just breathe. Left, right, left, right. Left, right, left, left, right. Left, right. I couldn't say it. <laughs> But I'm still breathing, how about you? Whew, march it out. I got a little warm with that pattern, how about you? Well, good news. We successfully accomplished a little more than eight minutes, I hope, <laughs> of our pattern, and we're gonna transition to our chair for our first set of strength. I'm gonna back it up a little so you can see my feet better. As you transition to your chair, let's try that punching pattern one more time, but make sure your feet are right near your chair. Punch, two, three, squat. Punch, two, three, squat. Whew. Ha! Uppercut, uppercut, uppercut. Uppercut, uppercut, uppercut. Boom, pow, boom. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. I like it. Hook. For you who aren't very much fighters, but you're more of a lover, don't worry. Let's just relax our hands. It's time to get seated. So we've already done plenty of squats. Take your time as you just sit down. Keep your weight equal on your right and left leg. Ah! Woo! It's time for a little sip of water. Here's to your health. Here's to the health of our village. I think our village is working pretty good on staying healthy. And here's to the health of our nation. That one needs a little more work. <laughs> but we can do it. All right. Let me turn this down a teeny tiny bit and we're gonna grab, stepping to the side, leaning to the side, Bracing, because this is a heavy weight. If you're using a gallon jug with a tight lid and some liquid in it, a gallon will weigh eight and almost a quarter pounds. This is a gallon and a quarter, but you can use anything you've got, remember? Do your best. We're going to use the weight and the ball. Ta da! So, get situated sort of back in your seat with the ball right behind the middle of your back. We're gonna have a very small range of motion because if we lean too far forward, the ball's gonna slip out. If that happens, don't worry. But just rest your weight on your lap for now and see if you can dig your feet in. Squeeze your glutes and press gently into the ball. As you do that, exhale. This is called hip extensions. We're, we're opening the front of our body and closing the back. So dig your heels in, keep all four chair legs on the floor, don't let the chair tip. But dig your heels in and feel your hamstrings get fired up. Squeeze your gluteals and feel them getting stronger. Pull your navel in, good. I hope it feels good. All right, now, if you like, you can pick up your jug with both hands on the handle, or you can cradle it with one underneath. 
We're going to use a short range of motion, keeping that jump close to our heart. Adds a little bit of resistance as we lean forward, but we're not we're not releasing all the pressure on the ball. Digging your heels in, breathing, add a chest press if you like. You can just push it a couple inches away from your rib cage, or you could push it halfway till arms are straight, or you could add it all the way up. And I'm getting tired because I've been pushing really hard. And this jug is kind of heavy, so do your best. And remember, when you feel like stopping, please do trust your body. I don't know how much weight you're using, and I don't know how you're feeling today. So I'm going to take a break. This is a flexibility exercise to reach back and get that ball. We were sitting back in our chair to keep the back pressing against the ball. But let's scooch forward in the chair so we can use our inner thighs. We were using the backs of our thighs and hips. Let's use the inside. Tuck your ball between your thighs above the knee joint. Let's give it a squeeze. Make sure our feet are a little closer than the knees so we don't end up in a knock knee position when we're squeezing. Breathe each time you squeeze. You gotta exhale. Now, we're going to try a one-armed row. We have a lot of strength with our upper back and our shoulder. So we're going to hinge, keeping our left hand on our left thigh. We're going to hinge halfway forward and reach for the right toes. Keep the back long and strong. Pull the navel in. Squeeze that jug up towards your shoulder, keeping it near to the side of your body. And squeeze the ball as you do your row. So breathe, squeeze that ball. Keep the back long. I recommend exhaling as you squeeze the air out of the ball and lift the jug, but you can breathe however it works best for you. Remember, do not hold your breath while we're doing our strength exercises. And this is a heavy jug and I'm encouraging you to challenge yourself that's why we're changing the tools we're using occasionally. And I'm hoping you've been able to add a little bit of fluid to your jug. Oh, I'm done. To make the resistance higher so your muscles get stronger. But remember, sometimes we go back if we have a little bit of a, I don't know. Let's do the, the uh, another set of our hip extensions before we get the left side. Sometimes we have a little injury or an illness, and or sometimes our schedule doesn't permit us to exercise as best as we would like, so we might lose a little bit of our strength, but then we can build it back up. So maintenance is progress, because if we don't do anything, we're going to regress. Put that ball right behind the center of your back, push, dig those feet in. I'm going to make my feet about hip width this time. And this time, I'm gonna press the jug a little bit more towards a vertical. But you get to decide, as you do your hip extensions, squeeze your gluteals, that's your butt. Dig your heels in, keep all four legs of the chair there. You get to decide if pressing from your heart to a couple inches higher is good for you, or a couple inches higher, or of all the way is good for you today. But breathe when you're pushing into the ball and pushing the, the weight up. Shoulder presses this time, if it suits your body. Could you be just doing the hip extensions? You betcha. Could you be just doing the overhead press? Yes. Could you be just about done? Oh yeah, you could. <laughs> I'm about done. Whew, okay, so take your time. Grab the ball. We'll do that second set of inner thigh ball squeezes. Positioning our hips forward in the chair. Putting the weight in the left arm this time. 
using the right arm to support our long, strong spinal posture. Extend the left arm, hinge a bit forward, give that ball a squeeze, and on that next squeeze, if you're ready, row. I had to move my feet a little bit closer than my knees because it felt like I was knock knee when I squeezed as hard as I could with the ball between my thighs, strengthening inner thighs. Think of squeezing your shoulder blades together behind your back as you row or drawing the elbow straight back behind you. Do your best. Within less than a minute, if you're using a good amount of resistance, that is squeezing the ball hard or lifting something that's heavy enough, within less than a minute, you should feel tuckered out, like dull, achy, pumped up feeling in the muscle groups that we used. So let's take our time, maybe wedge the ball behind us. And then step to the side, lean to the side, and replace your weights before you get a drink. So that, that feeling of momentary muscular fatigue is what we're shooting for, and that's when research shows that physiologically our muscles get stronger. They store up more cytoplasm, more ATP, and they're already able to do more after we've given them adequate rest. So, Check where we're at with this. We're doing good, folks. Very good. All right, let's get a sip of water. <laughs> I mean, I hope you're doing good. <laughs> Here's to exercising together and getting stronger together. And when we don't feel like we're really on target with our regular rhythms, call a friend reach out. We have a very tight-knit community and, and now more than ever it's so good to know your neighbors. Okay. Are you ready to try a little bit of our balance pattern? If you want to do it right here in the chair, remember this is the pattern that sounds like single, single, double. If you want to do it standing, go ahead, take your time right now, mindfully get up, and maybe come over here to the right side of your chair. Wherever you are, whether you're seated or standing, on your feet or in your seat, use your best posture. Use your best judgment. And we'll do single, single, double. If you're on your feet, double check your area, double check. Single, single, double. Make sure that the ball's not rolling under your feet, your water got tucked away, and use your chair at the side. If you're on the right side, you got to use that left hand able to see and touch the chair. Good. I just wanted to show you at home. You could do it in your chair, but when I'm in the chair, these knee lifts tire my hip flexors and quadriceps out, so you got to be a little creative. I lost the pattern. Single, single, double. Sometimes when you're in your chair, you might have to draw your heels back to give your thighs a rest. Or stretch your heels out. Again, just do what works best for you and keep moving. We got a single, single, double. I'm gonna join you on my single, single, double on my feet. Single, single, double. Let's play a little brain game. Wait, your thighs are probably getting tired too, you people who are standing. <laughs> Let's do two more of these. That was one. And last set. Yeah, yeah, you probably need to stretch out these muscles. I'll work on these opposing muscles, hamstrings. And to do that, it's best to get behind your chair. Okay? And to do full hamstring and gluteal recruitment, it's best to have a slightly athletic wide stance. 
and we're going to do single, single, double. Single, single, double. You could row with just one hand and the chest and the shoulders up. Or if you're feeling rock steady with your balance, you can do it with two hands because you know you can grab your chair whenever you like. Or tap your toe down. Single, single, double. In fact, if you never have to grab your chair or tap your toe down, we're not challenging you enough to change you. So think about that. Single, single, double. Now on the double, I want you to think of opposites and say them out loud. Like single, single, big, little. Single, single, tall, short. Single, single, light, dark. What do you say? Let me hear you. Keep going, opposites here. Single, single, loud, soft. Single, single, high, low. Single, single, what do you say? Come on, pick us up then. When you run out of things to say that are opposites, just keep moving. Sometimes it's harder than it seems like it would be, yeah? Okay, how about two more of these opposites? Last time, first, last. <laughs> March it out. Oof. How do you feel on our scale of one to 10? Are you a little breathy? Did your brain get strained? <laughs> I hope not. Because now we're gonna try it with those hips. So when we do hip abduction, it won't take as long for these muscles to tire. So when you want to, you can go back to your knee curls, right? Your hamstring curls. So, and this time, let's try double, double, fours. Are you ready? Let's do right, double, left, double. Now, four on the right, three, two. Balance is harder, double. Pull the navel in. And four on the left. Good. Now, we did opposites with our doubles, I want you to think of same things when you do your fours. So double, double, and maybe the seasons, spring, summer, winter, fall, double, double, or it could just be green things, zucchini, plants, kiwis, aliens, double, <laughs> double, I did not rehearse that, four, three, two, what are your similar things? Double. I'm running out of steam with my hips. Woo. Ah, yeah, you know, I'm going to rest my hips. How are your hips feeling? If you want to give it a little stretch. Before we transition to the left side of the chair and try this one more time, make sure your area is free and clear. And we'll go back to those knees. Single, single, double. Single, single, double. Good. How are you doing? Double. Can you touch your chair with your right hand? Is your posture nice and tall? Could you put an imaginary glass of water on your head and not let it tip over? Good. Single, single, double. Now let's add a tiny bit of a coordination challenge to this knee lift. Also some hip mobility. So make sure you can touch your chair. And we're gonna take it just single, single, up and over and back. Single, single, up and cross the midline and back. Single, single, up. You can tap it down if you need. Single, single. And then you can add that opposite arm. Single, single. If you don't need it for a balance check. Single, single, double. I messed it up a little there. Did you see that? <laughs> single, single, double. Single, single, double. Hmm, confusing myself. How are you doing? My legs are tired. 
on the front. So I'm gonna just march it out. And, and sometimes when you feel tightness after some repetitive movement, that is the best time to complement it by lengthening. So I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see what I'm doing. Taking one leg back, up on the ball of the foot in a lunge position. Normally our shoulders are right over our hips. If we sink down just a little and tuck our pelvis under and lean our heart back a little, you might feel a nice stretch here. I'm just taking a few seconds to loosen up. Likewise, we can do the other. Now I only came over here so you can see what I'm doing. So shoulders over hips, tuck the tailbone under like a sad puppy dog. And lean your heart back. Now if it hurts your back, you wouldn't want to do this. But I was just feeling a little tight there, so I suspect you might have been also. We're going to transition to the chair for another strength set. Some of these strength exercises, we combine two things. It's fine if you do just one or both, and the other option is zero. You can decide what's best for you. Like You can decide to just get seated slow and steady, or you can do a few squats. You get to decide because you know you best. And this changes how we're feeling from day to day, minute to minute, depending on what we just did. So as soon as you're ready to get seated, be slow, be careful and mindful as you step to the side and lean to the side to brace with your arm and your abdominal exercises and get some water. I have to check my notes. We're going to finish off with some abdominal work. And then some more shoulder and back work combined with some squats, if you like. But remember, you can do it seated the whole while. Okay. First thing we're going to use is our ball. So, if you come to the edge of your seat, bring your feet together. You can place the ball on your lap. We're going to do what I call thinker abs. You know that Rodin, Rodin um, sculpture, the thinker? He's got one arm there. We're gonna use both, and we're not gonna punch ourselves in the chin. Just stack your elbows on top of the ball. And see how it feels to contract your abdominals, pulling your navel in, exhaling, and pushing the elbows into the ball. Now you might wanna experiment. You could use just the flat part just below the elbow joint. That might suit you, your limb lengths and your body better. Or you could try just above the elbow joint, depending on your torso length and your limb lengths. Holding that navel in and really pushing down. We're doing an abdominal crunch here but we're also working on these shoulder stabilizer muscles. So don't let your shoulders pop up. Keep them down, away from your earlobes. Pull the navel in and really dig in as best you can for four more, or stop when you want. Three, two, we're really pushing hard. One, now while you're in that down position, push, push, push with those shoulders. Breathing, inhaling as if you're smelling your favorite soup. And exhale as if you're blowing to cool it off. Woo! I got a little warm doing that exercise. All right, we're gonna do a, a little bit of work from the squat position. This time we're gonna do a narrower squat and this makes it hard. You could substitute another with your hips back in the chair and your heels on the inside of the leg frame. No, you know what? This won't work because not everybody's ball is the same size. So scratch that thought. Just tuck your ball somewhere where it won't get under your feet. And let's use our weight. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna tuck my ball behind me. Sitting back in your chair, 
with your weight, whether it's a jug or whatnot, feet nice and wide and heels fairly close to the chair in case you decide to squat. We're going to do a little bit of an upright row. So let the weight hang between your legs. Keep your back long and strong and tilt forward. You might even be able to tap the floor, maybe not, with your jug. And then sit up. So as we sit up, you can lift the jug. That's our upright row. Keep the back long and strong as we hinge only halfway towards our thighs. Dig your heels in and think about standing up when the jug comes up. Dig your heels in and pretend to stand up when the jug comes up. And if everything feels ready, go ahead and stand up as the jug comes up. Sit down, reach those heels back, keep your head up. Exhale up, squeeze your gluteals. Down and control, up, nice and controlled and slow, or if you have good ability and you feel very well balanced, you can add a little bit of power on the way up. This is a full body, upright row and a squat, and this is how you lift the heaviest things that you want to because you're using your whole body. And since it's a whole body exercise, you might be feeling like you're running out of gas. And if so, just take a rest. Okay, so let's put that weight down and do another abdominal exercise. We were doing a lot of forward flexion using these abdominals in the front that look like a six pack or the rectus abdominis. This time we're going to focus on our sides and we're going to use our ball sitting near the edge of our chair to do what I call rainbow abs. So get your feet a little bit ahead of your knees, lengthen your back and now tuck the tailbone under, pull the navel in and lean back a bit. You can feel at a certain point where we're reclined a bit that our abdominals are engaged, keeping the ball near your chest. Keep the ball in front of your rib cage as you rotate slowly, gently to one side, keeping the navel pulling in and to the other. Just use your full, safe, comfortable range of motion. But pull the navel in. And if you want, you squeeze the ball as you exhale. If your thumb or any of your joints in your hand hurt, you don't have to squeeze. But exhale when you squeeze. If you want to make it bigger, that makes the abdominal work harder. Your rainbow could be huge, medium, or small. Your rainbow can add an opposite knee lift if you like. Get that foot down before you do the other side. Okay, we're slowing down in that one. We're going to tuck the ball away and do one last set of strength work using our hand weight or our jug. So take your time and get it. Scooch back in the chair. This time, let the weight hang between your hip width or wider feet. Feet touching the chair if you intend to stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight with this kettlebell swing is what I would liken it to, but we're using our weight, long arms, long, strong back, digging our heels in, we're gonna lift the weight with our elbows bent a bit. If that felt good, you can straighten them a bit. Dig your heels in and pretend to stand up. As you bring that weight up to about chin high, no higher than eye high. And if it's feeling good, you can add range of motion and stand all the way up and then hover down. Don't let the knees knock. We're doing front shoulder raises, which is hard. So remember, the closer the weight is to your body, the easier it will be. If you're doing the kettlebell swing, control it. Add power up. Control down. And that is a big whole body exercise. So we did a lot of work today with our weight. I am 
I'm going to set it on the seat rather than lean over all the way and get my head lower than the level of the heart. And I encourage you to stand up for a little bit of a balanced stretch. So, I showed you a hip flexor stretch, but the other group of muscles it's very hard to stretch, and when, especially when seated are the calves. So, let's see if we can first strengthen the calves with our neutral stance, be able to use the chair, head over shoulders, over hips, come up as high as you can on your tiptoes, tuck your tailbone under, and see if you can balance. Good, then come back down. See if you can lift your toes up off of the floor. Keep your hips tucked under. This one's harder, lifting the toes up or strengthening the shins. Balancing, whoa, <laughs> that was hard for me. Now, we can stretch those muscles by walking the heel back on one side, leaning forward. Take your time. Stretches should never hurt. Anything hurts you. By now, I hope you know, pain is a message from your body, which has evolved over tens of, it's full of tens of thousands of years of wisdom. Pain is a signal to stop. You stick your hand in a flame and it hurts. And your body tells you immediately to bring it back. Same thing if you have a sudden sharp shooting pain during any movement, reduce the range of motion, go back to the last thing that, that felt comfortable to you. And let's try the other leg, calf stretch, walking the heel back, a little bit at a time, pacing it on the floor and leaning forward. And take your time. Now, we did those toe raises and heel raises, or calf raises and then shins. Let's do it again. Mindful, head over shoulders, over hips. Come up, let's bring our feet together this time, make it a little more challenging. Come up, 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 as high as you can on your tippy toes. Tuck your gluteals under. You got your chair there if you need it. You could also come down to your flat feet, but balance. Good, bringing your heels back down to the ground. Lift your toes up. Ooh. Tighten your shin muscles, the fronts of your lower leg, your calves. And see if you can tuck those hips under and balance. This one's harder, harder for me. Is it hard for you? If you wanna stretch the shins carefully, do some ankle rotations or turn that toe under and get a nice stretch here and with the other you know what that means it's time to slow down all right I'm gonna move these things out of the way get in the chair one last squat with all the weights I've got. <laughs> if you're thirsty, please step to the side, lean to the side, grab a little drink. Mm. And we're just going to see if we can consciously slow our breath Slower breathing rate, slower heart rate. So, sitting comfortably near the front edge of your chair. Breathe in if you can through your nose, rest your hands in your lap. And I'm gonna suggest three to five mindful inhale exhalation cycles at your own pace. See if you can slow it as you go. Relax, shoulders down, breathe in through your nose, relax the belly, fill the lungs from the bottom to the top. As you exhale, relax, go at your own pace, and just notice your breath. And then do it again.
Sometimes when we're excited, we breathe very shallowly near the top of our lungs, or we get tense and pull our navel in as we're trying to fill our lungs. So just a couple things for you to notice. And when you notice your breathing panting style up high in your chest, you can bring your attention to your breath work and breathing in through your nose and just paying attention will help calm that parasympathetic sort of response. So let's get some stretches. We can still breathe in through our nose as we open our hands and our forearms and our shoulders and our chest and lift, opening our spine, lengthening it. And then exhale. So you do the reverse or the opposite. Exhale, fully curling the spine. That felt so good. If you want to do it again, please join me. Or do another stretch that you want to do. your feet a bit. We worked pretty hard with our inner thighs. So let's, keeping the knees pointing the same direction as the toes, we can gently open and lengthen those hip adductors. And then we can also stretch that upper back and rear shoulder that we worked with our rowing exercises. Stay here. Fill the lungs from the bottom to the top and feel the stretch develop a little bit. Put that shoulder in the back pocket again. Gentle stretch here if you like. And other shoulder. Fill the lungs with a deep cleansing breath. Good. I hope it felt good. Okay, bringing the feet in a bit. I'm gonna hold on to one side so I don't fall out of my chair. And I stretch through the side. Big deep breath, filling the rib cage really makes the stretch a little bit more lengthy. Now if your shoulder aches, you could still stretch through the side, but shorten the lever. And then the other side. Take your time. We're more likely to get hurt when we go quickly or too quickly. Sometimes we need to have speed to avoid a fall. And that's why sometimes we work on that agility and the power, the, the tempo part of our work. So that if we need to use speed to catch ourselves from falling, that it's something we've worked on. So what else is tight? Let's do that seated hip flexor quadricep stretch. I showed you a standing one, but it's really hard for most people. So if you turn and face the left side of your room, wherever you're at, I'm sorry, turn and face the right side of your room and have that left hip off of the chair, you can Hinge forward and support your spine and slowly take your time to get that right knee somewhere behind or in line with the right hip. I said it opposite again. Today was an opposite day. <laughs> Let that, that knee drift down to the floor and fully breathe, relaxing your abdomen. And inhale, lifting the crown of your head up, or even back a little, if it feels good. And when you're ready to exhale, lean toward the chair. Relax that leg and let it drift downward. You can hinge at that elbow and pat your back if it feels good and get a little tricep stretch as well. Ooh, 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 that felt good for me. We'll get the other side. 
But before we do, let's get this figure four stretch. Crossing at the ankles, hinging forward, let outside of the knee drift down towards the floor, kind of towards the edge of your seat to allow the hip to externally rotate. If your hips are more flexible and it's comfortable to do your figure four stretch with the ankle on the lap, then that's the better stretch for you. If neither one of these suits your hips, you could just stretch out your right leg and do the hamstring stretch that we start with a lot of times. Ease out of that, and we'll try the left hip. The left hip may not be as limber as the right or vice versa, so try it ankle crossed over ankle. Keep that right knee stacked over the ankle and let the outside of the left knee Drift down toward the ground, hinging forward to develop that deep rotator cuff of the hip stretch. And if it suits your abilities better, crossing the ankle on the lap, hinging forward. And just gently encouraging the outside of your left knee to drift downward. Take one more breath here, and as you exhale, if you like, don't lower your collarbone, but let the chin drip slowly toward the collarbone, lengthening the back of the neck. Just the weight of the head, stretching the muscles on the back of your neck. Ease out of that, and we'll ease into our last quadricep hip flexor, pretty much all body stretch. Facing the left side of your room. Right hip just ever so slightly off the chair. Hinge forward to support your spine as you gradually reach back, just the way it feels good to you. Your leg may not be nearly that far back. Your toe might be pointing backward and relaxed foot or tucked under. Any way it goes, relax, let the weight of that right knee drift toward the crown. As you breathe in, let the crown of the head and the spine drift up. And if it feels good, you can open your spine ever so slightly. If it doesn't, don't do it. When you're ready to exhale, lean towards that chair, back. Hinging at the elbow, if you like, to stretch the upper arm, the triceps. And easing out. Good chair stretch. All right, turn your body forward and scooch back we're going to once again take just a few breaths. Let the shoulders rest down. And let the body rest also. Let the mind rest also. And relax, release any tension as you rest your hands in your lap. And just breathe. Your breath should be effortless and energizing, just like the tide, perhaps the ocean. Breathe in as the wave gently brings forward nutrients to the beach. And exhale as the wave ebbs back into the sea releasing any tension you feel. You can use imagery to enhance your relaxing, your mindful breathing.
I like to pretend I'm going on a virtual vacation sometimes, and guess what? Today, in my mind, I went to the Glen. The Glen Helen is reopened. So now, if we're mindful of the new trail maps that are available in the parking lot by the Trailside Museum and the um, Ecology Building off of Quarry Street, that they've rerouted the trails so that we can safely be going in one direction so we're not always crossing paths. Um, there's other things to pay attention to. And um, I just wanted to remind you that you can find out all about local news in your wonderful, fabulous Yellow Springs News. If you're new to town, you can get it for free. Um, if you're not new to town, you can pick it up downtown on Wednesday afternoons or have it mailed to you. Um, but I wanted to just let you know, the Glen is reopened. That's good news. Um, our community, our local community, is, is really thinking about the environment and racism and what we can do about it. And so there's an um, interesting virtual series about uh, blacks and the history of blacks in and around the area. This week there was there is one about black farming. If you went to Speak Up for Justice or saw it virtually on their Facebook page or our Black Lives Matters groups, um, this week they talked about local businesses owned by um, black folks. So you can support all that and more, but whenever you're in Yellow Springs, actually wherever you go, if you can wear a mask, please do. And Keep exercising, especially exercise your right to vote. Woo! -hoo! So think about that. We'll talk more about that next week, but next week might be too late. So think about it now and read about what you could do in the All Springs News. So bye for now. Stay safe, stay strong, stay tuned, stay connected, and think global, but act local. <laughs> Bye, keep it safe and simple.